As the impeachment trial begins in Washington, the president is in Switzerland for the World Economic Forum, which is focused on sustainability this year. Mr. Trump spoke with an audience of government and business leaders this morning, and he spoke about remaining positive about the future. He criticized past, quote, prophets of doom for predicting overpopulation and mass starvation. Let's take a listen. To embrace the possibilities of tomorrow, we must reject the perennial prophets of doom and their predictions of the apocalypse. They are the heirs of yesterday's foolish fortune tellers, and I have them, and you have them, and we all have them. And they want to see us do badly, but we don't let that happen. So earlier I spoke with Michael Mann. He's a professor and director of Pennsylvania State University's Earth System Science Center. And I asked him about how climate scientists would receive the president's comments. Yeah, well, unfortunately, it's a combination of denial and deflection. Hmm. Uh, denial in that he is literally denying the reality and threat that is posed by climate change here in Australia. Um, they don't have an opportunity to deny climate change. They're dealing with uh, some of the most profound climate change impacts they've ever seen here uh, in Sydney. Um, the, the skies have been filled with smoke. Uh, they're dealing with unprecedented wildfires that have broken out and engulfed much of the continent because of unprecedented heat and drought. So it's rather ironic that as this climate change disaster plays out here in Australia, the president is denying uh, the threat of climate change um, and dismissing the predictions which were actually remarkably accurate. Uh, there was a report in Australia published back in 2008 that said if we continue to warm the planet by putting carbon emissions into the atmosphere, by 2020, we will see a noticeable increase in the severity and extent of bushfires. Here it is in 2020, and we're seeing unprecedented bushfires uh, across the continent. Um, I said it's denial, and it's also deflection, because here he is trying to deflect attention towards individual behavior, planting trees, when the real problem is our addiction to fossil fuels. And of course, uh, President Trump has appointed to his administration uh, fossil fuel lobbyists who run their energy and environmental policy and have, in fact, uh, done everything they can to dismantle the climate protections that were put in place by the previous administration. So it's a really sad and unfortunate performance here at Davos by um, you know, uh, the person who's supposed to be the leader of the free world. Mm -hmm. um, so he did mention this Trillion Trees initiative. Um, it's being rolled out this year at the World uh, Economic Forum. Can you tell us more about that? What sort of impact is it expected to make? And, you know, you mentioned you sort of the way you sort of described it compared to what the president had said, it, is it seems like it's a little bit of a drop in the bucket. It is. Um, you know, these sorts of things can help a little bit. Um, you know, reforestation can, can make a dent in the problem. But most of our emissions, more than 60 percent of the carbon pollution, is coming from the burning of fossil fuels for energy and transportation. That's inconvenient to an administration that has outsourced its energy and environmental policy to fossil fuel interests. And so what the president is doing here is deflecting attention from the real problem, the gorilla in the room, mm -hmm. which is our continued dependence on fossil fuels, and instead trying to deflect that attention towards you know, individual behavior, planting trees, things that might uh, you know, make a small dent in the problem, but ultimately can't get us the reductions in emissions we're going to need if we're going to stabilize warming below dangerous levels. If we're going to do that, we need to bring our carbon emissions down by a factor of two within the next 10 years. The uh, policies of the, the current administration are taking us exactly in the opposite direction. And just to sort of clarify what the, the One Trillion Tree Initiative is, is it exactly what it sounds like, a pledge to plant a trillion trees? Yeah, I haven't seen the details of it. So, you know, um, I've only seen the broad strokes and, you know, it sounds nice. Um, but in, in fact, uh, you know, the logistics of doing that, um, the, the support that could actually be provided for making that happen, and in the end, how much of a difference it would make, a, a small difference. If right. we don't get our you know, our, our reliance on, on fossil fuels under control. If we don't reduce our, our, our carbon pollution from fossil fuel burning, it doesn't matter what else we do. 
So when you hear the president's speech at Davos, knowing that there's a particular focus this year on environmental concerns, and you hear sort of one mention of an initiative and then kind of a wholesale discounting of the commonly scientific, uh, the, the scientifically agreed upon theory, does this surprise you? Is this sort of fit into what you expected from him? Yeah, it doesn't surprise me, unfortunately, yeah. at all, because the, the president, as I said, he has outsourced his energy and environmental policy to the fossil fuel industry, and here he's simply doing their bidding. So I know, you know, we're talking about the president, but I just kind of wanted to get your take on this. Is there any sense of irony that we're talking about Davos, where there are very many wealthy people flying in on private jets to discuss the problem of uh, climate change in this country? Well, you know, I mean, ultimately, uh, you know, we do have to change our transportation systems. Um, we have to remake our global economy if we're going to tackle this problem. Um, but it's too easy to sort of focus attention on individual behavior, mm -hmm. on the choices we make, when in fact, the real problem is the infrastructure and the choices we have available to us. We need incentives. We need government policies that will incentivize uh, carbon-friendly, climate-friendly transportation and energy production. Ultimately, we need systemic change. We need support for uh, governmental policies that will get us uh, where we need to go. And it's too easy to sort of point the finger at individuals and their behavior when, in fact, we really have to solve this problem systemically, and that we need uh, means we need politicians who are willing to make the tough choices, who are willing to get us off our addiction to fossil fuels. Great points. Michael Mann, thank you so much. Thank you.